Okay, so we are looking at part B after we did part A. So part A showed us that um, the uh, flux through the surface of the cube is equal to 3 halves. So part A is the left-hand side of the divergence theorem uh, that we solved. So we're going to do part B, and we want to get 3 halves for the right-hand side of the divergence theorem, uh, which is going to tell us that the flux change inside of the volume uh, is equal to the flux change uh, through the surface. So that's kind of conceptually what we're trying to do here. Um, but let's crunch our numbers and see if we can get three halves when we do the other side of this equation here too. Okay, so the problem recommends that we first do this uh, del operator dot f, uh, and we're going to verify the divergence theorem. So we're going to um, this this a is interchangeable. It just basically is like any vector. Um, so we're, the a for this equation is going to be our f vector. Um, and then, so we're going to do this uh, del dot f first, and then we're going to find our dv, and then we're going to integrate across that dv. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to show you how to derive this del dot f, um, but you can always just use the general equation in your problems, but just so that you guys have kind of a higher level understanding of what's going on here. Um, okay, so when we do dot product with any vectors, we are multiplying like our, our x hat component or our x components by our x components, our y uh, added to our y by our y, and our z um, by our z. So, you know, x1, um, x2, oops, x1 dotted with x2, right? Plus y1 dotted with y2 plus z1 dotted with z2, right? So that's what we're going to do here. Same approach, even though our vectors are have a lot more going on here. Okay, so our del operator dot f uh, is going to be equal to the partial uh, with respect partial derivative with respect to x of f of x x hat um, plus the partial derivative with respect to y uh, dotted with f of y y hat. Um, and one thing to note too, this is like a, this f of y, this is just like a subscript and it basically just means the um, magnitude in the x direction or the y direction um, of your vector respectively. Okay, partial to z, z hat dot f of z, oh, damn, f of z, z hat. Okay, um, so just as a quick review, when you are dotting a vector, with itself, uh, it's actually equal to the magnitude of the vector squared. And in the case of these uh, uh, unit directional vectors, that's just one. So if you're dotting these vectors with themselves, uh, it's the magnitude squared, and that's equal to one here. So those are going to cancel, uh, essentially, or just kind of you're, they're going to drop out of your equation. You're going to end up with a multiplier of 1. And oops, I keep writing the wrong variable. Sorry about that. F of y, y plus the partial with respect to z of f sub z. So this is our general equation uh, for um, our uh, del operator dot f. Uh, so we can actually plug in. Um, we can take any vector and plug in the magnitude in the x, y, and z direction uh, and then apply these partial derivatives and it will give us the value for this. Um, so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to take, we're going to use the general equation that we just derived uh, and then we're going to take our vector and we're going to sub in the values. So this is our f of x, this is our f of f sub y here. This is our f sub z. So just a quick note on notation here, because some people tend to get hung up on this, that these that you see here, uh, ax is equal to x hat. These are just a different way to represent uh, the directional unit vectors. So just keep in mind that these are the same. Uh, so don't let those trip you up. Okay. So plugging in what we have here, so xy, partial with respect to x plus the partial yz with respect to y plus the partial of uh, zx with respect to z. Okay, so this is 
So just a quick note on partial derivatives because I know people tend to get hung up on those. So like say I have like x, y, z, q or something with respect to x. Um, anything that is not the variable and the denominator that I care about, I just treat it like a constant. So that'd be y, z, q. Uh, so it's basically the same as the derivative of like say I have 3x with respect to x. 3 is a constant. Uh, when 3 is the only thing that I care about, or when, it, when I'm sorry, when x is the only thing that I care about, I treat everything else like a constant. So we're going to see that happen here. I'm just going to erase that quick. Okay, so x, I care about x, y, I care about y, z, I care about z, everything else is a constant. Uh, so I'm going to end up with y plus z plus x. So that's my solution here for this guy. All right, so we got through part one. So we found this part. Uh, and then, like I said before, the second part of this, we're going to find our dB, and then we're going to integrate across the volume. So people tend to have trouble finding dB, dS, and dL. Um, I think a good way to kind of think about it is like if look at your shape and kind of think about like, well, what is, what's my volume? So I have, a, I have a cube. How do I find a volume of my cube, right? Volume here would be x times y times z, right? Because length times width times height for my cube. So I want a differential volume. I want dB. So what's changing here? So I have a change in x. I care about the change in x. I care about the change in y. And I care about my change in z. So I have dx dy dz for my differential volume. Okay, so now I'm going to use that and plug that into my equation. So if you get stuck, sometimes it helps to think about the volume or the surface and what the base equation is and work backwards. Um, there are also some good cheat sheets online if you need to look up something up to kind of like help you uh, so that you don't get bogged down um, or stuck on just that one piece. dz. Okay, so I've got this. So now let's set this up. So we want um, my del dot f, right, and dv. So we found all these pieces separately, so let's put them all together. Um, y plus z plus x, uh, and then I have dx, dy, dz. Uh, and now I'm just going to uh, break up my integral. Um, so I have y dy plus z dz plus x dx. Okay, so the last piece here, uh, the last important piece, uh, I'm just going to kind of move this up here. Uh, I want to find my bounds, right, for y, z, and x. Um, so for this particular problem, uh, I can look at the shape and kind of figure those out. So whenever I want to find my bounds, I want to go back to the shape and kind of look at what's going on and work backwards from there. So, okay, uh, what's my range for y, what's my range for z, uh, and what's my range for x? So I'm taking a look over here. So my range for x, I'm going to go from 0 to 1 for x, 0 to 1 for y, and from 0 to 1 for z. So those are going to become my bounds. So this one's pretty straightforward. Uh, and then I'm going to evaluate my integral. So I'm going to end up with y squared over 2 from 0 to 1 plus x, oh, z, z was the next one, plus z squared over 2 from 0 to 1 plus x squared over 2 from 0 to 1. So that's going to turn into some of these top bounds minus the bottom bounds, squared over 2 plus squared over 2 plus 1 squared over 2, so this is like x y and z uh, minus 0 squared over 2 plus 0 squared over 2 plus 0 squared over 2 again x y and z uh, and then my solution is equal to 3 halves and therefore our divergence theorem is proved uh, we proved that the flux going through the surface, or across the surface, uh, and closing the volume, so through the surface, uh, is equal to the flux change inside of the volume. So 3 halves is equal to uh, 3 halves. 
and therefore, divergence theorem is proved.